Are you a leader in customer success, pre-sales, professional services, support? Do you work behind the scenes and roll up your sleeves to make sure that customers are happy? Renew. Then this is for you. Welcome to the GSD Podcast. Welcome to the GSD Podcast. Getting it done. Services, success, and software. We'll talk with the pros that have been in the trenches, getting service teams off the ground, launching new types of groups to service customers, or running agencies that don't have a product attached to it. For the pros, by the pros. This is the GSD Podcast, and this is your host, Jeff Kushmerick. All right, so Alex, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit, I just hit record and now we are recording. For everybody right. listening, we just had our, as I said, mutual admiration society comparing each other's speaking <laughs> voices because we both hate our own speaking voice. So oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a tough gig. It's you know, if you're if you're a perfectionist, it, it's you know the worst thing you could do is is listen, go back and listen to recordings of yourself. Because there's I'm, nothing you could do about I, it. I know. This, you're just, can, on that note, you, could you just tilt your glasses just a No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. So Alex and I, I should say, we did work together. I always like to start the podcast off, podcast off uh, not the podcast, that's a different thing, but um, with um, how I know the guest. And so Alex is, was a, a very dynamic young man when I started a, a little place called Virgin Pulse which is actually one of my favorite stories because it was for me one of the first implementation teams created in the history of SaaS, as I as I like to say. Mm-hmm. I hadn't heard of it, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> Did you know how that whole? It's probably good for our listeners. Do you know how that whole thing kind of happened? Like like the whole why there was an implementation team created and stuff like that? Because it will get into your enablement stuff and everything like that. So. Yeah, absolutely. I think you know, like all companies starting off it's everyone is like a catch-all for everything yeah so, that's exactly it you know the the customer success managers were managing the the customer they were also implementing the customer they had <laughs> you know they had the switchboard to everything oh my god so we, hard <laughs> totally and as you grow as an organization you know that becomes harder and harder to really focus on strategy yep. and be the operational front Exactly. And then that's when we sort of made a decision, hey, this is not scalable. Right. So right. let's hire a rock star to lead our implementation team. Or and, and then uh, hire me if that rock star doesn't accept. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Either way. But you you, you know, hit it on the head and actually you're selling yourselves a little bit short. The, co- the company was going through a replatforming. So right. there was the need to know how the old system was set up, which was actually pretty hard. It was a lot of configuration, lots of business. So everybody's like, oh, it's great. You wear a Fitbit and you get your stuff tracked and you get all these recommendations. And I'm like, if you knew what went into that, it was like Twitter type of technology. Like you needed that data flying in, you need to configure, this means that, HIPAA stuff, privacy, because we're dealing with people's health stuff. Oh my God. So, um, and so there was the replatforming going on, which was kind of like, oh, Alex, hey, I know you know the old stuff, but you kind of have to know the new stuff too. And oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and so so we were going through that and it was a complex thing to set up. And um, and so when I went around and talked to people like yourself and then, you know, Megan and Kate obviously gave the feedback where um, it's like a bomb that goes off, right? You're trying to monitor, like, let's just say to be gen- generous, like 30 customers. And mm-hmm. then, um, and then suddenly you're like, congrats, we just signed up this new mega corporation with 50,000 users. And, um, this will be your primary concern for the next six months moving forward, right? It just doesn't scale, as you said. Absolutely. It's a full-time job. You know, I think it's, it's, and it's a whole different skill set that, People, you know, it's their job to, yeah. to manage the configuration, to manage operations, et cetera. Yeah. And I think, you know, going from a small company to a larger company, 
it's a common thing where yeah. the the customer success manager is a catch all, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so ensuring that as you grow, you sort of have those different buckets, like someone in a team specifically responsible for operations, yep. and then a specific team responsible for managing the strategy of the customer. Absolutely. And you can focus yeah. on the strategy and the renewal and the advocacy and yes. all that stuff. I, I also, there's so many finding like, so on, on the catch all that's for people who have heard me speak about this before, I call that uh, project Pangea, right? It's the super yeah. continent, right? And yeah. then you suddenly need, okay, it's time to do some continental drift here. And now North America becomes onboarding. And then there's uh, you know, stuff like that. But I also found, and tell me if I'm wrong here, there, are, I think there's a distinct personality difference between the onboarding and, well, let's just say implementation resources and then the CSM type of resources, right? Where I, I found that the CSMs are like the huggers, the people oh, persons, yeah. and implementation more like it's been great knowing you these two three months. I <laughs> uh, if things go well, we never have to talk again. And uh, then they like just a lot of these short term smash and grab type jobs and, and move along. Go That's ahead, amazing. great knowing you. Like yeah, yeah. I think you know, you know you need a, a good cop, bad cop, and, yeah. and you know even that's kind of putting it a little aggressively. I think um, at the end of the day, we all want the customer to succeed. Yeah. We all want them to win. Um, you know, and, and the reason behind certain decisions are because we want the customer to win. And sometimes, right. depending on which side of the fence you're on, that might not perceive be perceived that way. But I think, you know, having a team focused on the what can you and what can't you do operationally is important because then as a customer success manager, you can sort of, you know, I, I worked with this team, they are experts in this. And unfortunately, we can't do this right now, but we are going to prioritize it to make it a capability, right? Because if you sort of start frankensteining everything yes mm -hmm. i'm making that a uh, an, a verb if you start <laughs> frankensteining everything while while giving the illusion that that's oh a win for the customer it becomes hard to support that frankenstein piece right mm -hmm. and it makes it hard for the rest of our customer base as well so i think it's there's an art to conveying that message to the customer that you know we can't do this and this here's why is because we want to make sure that what we do deliver to you is quality right. and, you know, bulletproof. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that's kind of the, I think the CSM has that should have that skill set to, yeah. to do that. Right. And, yeah. and, and find alternatives that are tested, that are quality um, that accomplish the same goal that the customer is looking forward to. No, that's a, that's a great summary. And whereas the implementation people are more like, we've got 90 days, like, that's you know, right. exactly. which checkbox would you like? You know, I, mean, I, I kid, but, uh, yes. uh, and you, you've got a whole, like, you know, I'll say full stack CSM and kind of done it all. Right. Yeah, um, yeah. So now you're in this enablement role. And so <laughs> like we joked about before, Talk to me like I'm a five-year-old <laughs> and tell yeah. me exactly what you're doing with this enablement role these days. Absolutely. So, you know, I, I've been in a, a customer success capacity for over 20 years combined um, and about seven years in a leadership role on the enablement function. So, you know, I think enablement traditionally, I think a lot of people think of enablement as sort of the baking soda right and i use the baking soda i know <laughs> bear with me I, 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 crashing I, I, wait is that the powder or the soda is that the gold can or the white box it's the whole thing it's the whole thing right if you think about it right baking soda is used for everything right yeah. you have bad breath right you have baking soda toothpaste yeah. you want to make your teeth white baking soda right you want to take get rid of a stain baking soda right wow. you want to build a volcano, put vinegar in baking soda, right? <laughs> right? Where it's like a catch-all thing. And, and while there is some truth to that, and enablement is a catch-all to help fix processes, to help, you know, 
just make sure that things are, are running smoothly. I think it's important, this is uh, something that I'm pioneering right now in my organization that I'm in, is really defining enablement for the benefit of the, the organization and for the benefit of the enablement team. Mm. So I kind of view enablement in four different buckets. Um, the first bucket is learning and development. Mm -hmm. So learning and development, I, I find to be the central artery of enablement, right? So, and that includes onboarding. So after, and Alex, is that customer yeah. learning and development or internal learning and development or both? It is, it is internal learning yeah. and development. So good question. So it's more, you know, in the capacity of what is it that the customer success team kind of building a path to them mm -hmm. to make sure that they are trained on things like product, right? On, and even things like um, professional development, right? So working with leadership to say, what are some things that the team is struggling with yep. that we can build curriculum to help them with, right? Things like managing difficult conversations, things like, you know, doing a zoom call online right what are those yep. what are those sort of you know rules of the road there so that's my first bucket learning and development um second is solutions enablement so that's that's more like product enablement i yep. sort of coined that that sector as the hallway to product okay. right so they're the ones that they they're sort of in charge with making sure that what product releases is then packaged up and put into a sort of digestible way for the customer success team to understand. Wow, this is so interesting. I think back in the day, this was the product marketing team was responsible for this, but they never used the product. God bless them, like they're great at some yes. other things, but they never used the product. So there was always this, which is why you're trying to fix it, I'm guessing. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I'm glad you brought that up. I think the product marketing team, it's they are sort of our partner with okay. us, right? So product marketing, they are the ones who still own the messaging, still own the positioning, yep. um, and even still own the collateral builds, right? For, mm -hmm. To supplement that. And then we then, we're sort of the aggregator and we work with product marketing. We work with, you know, even things like security and legal. We work with pricing, all of those things. And we wrap it up in a nice bow tie and then we then are the ones who serve that to the customer success team. So that's kind of the, you know, oh, where it all, all, yeah. all comes into play. Um, the third is operations. So this stream is re responsible for the inner workings of the enablement team. So think of, you know, softwares out there like Gainsight, um, Salesforce, et cetera. They're sort of that, the oil of the enablement machine to mm -hmm. make it all run together. Um, and then finally, our last piece is the customer and consultant relations arm. Okay. And th that, that branch is responsible for the, what, what wakes them up every day is they think about how are our customers doing, okay. right? And the way they measure that is they, they head up our NPS score. Mm -hmm. So they're the ones who administer the NPS survey. They also administer customer health score. Right. which is another concept that we have. Yep. So that's kind of what keeps them up at night. And again, it's like taking all of that together, it's, I found to be a very uh, foolproof model that covers everything and people really understand what enablement does, yeah. right? Everything else is, you know, other departments manage that, but that's kind of, um, that's my mission right now, gotcha. just to go back to your question, is just kind of trying to brand my team mm -hmm. um, within the organization to help the organization understand us, and then also help the team understand their specific roles within the enablement team. Got it. And do you have a team member for each of those sort of four functions? Are you guys just kind of divide and conquer or? Vision, um, I would <laughs> love, I would love to have, you know, we're, yep. we're getting there. Yep. Um, Right now, it is a little bit of a scrappy kind of experience, but but vision, I think, in order to be most effective, having someone underneath one each one of those branches 
will warrant the best uh, experience, in my opinion. That's great. What are what have, what have been some of the the pain points of getting this launched up uh, and off the ground? I think um, you know sometimes who's on first happens. Okay. With with other departments, um, and just kind of understanding everybody's role and everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I think your point of product marketing is a is a very good point. Right of of kind of educating and understanding. Okay, what is what is it that product marketing does, and what is it that enablement does? Right, and defining what those rules of engagement are. I think um, enablement really serves as an aggregator as well. Mm. You know, I think I think it's important to have someone that's not in any department, right? To, to sort of be that glue, right? Because it's like, if you don't have someone that's not, you know, that's unbiased, if you will, you have product marketing doing their thing, but then like, how do they deliver that to the stakeholders, right? And then you have another, you know, another department doing their thing and how do they deliver that to the stakeholders, right? But if you have enablement, being that aggregator and then packaging it up and delivering, um, that's what, that's where the magic happens. So I think, you know, getting back to your original question, I think it's just understanding the rules of engagement. Yeah. Sometimes it yeah. has, has some difficulties to it. Okay. Um, and I think I'm trying to think if there's any other, I remember we were chatting about this a little bit when we first kind of caught up again, cause just for people that don't, Alex and I hadn't talked for a few years. So, uh, one of my first questions was like, how does this play in with other teams that need enablement? They're like, so a new salesperson joins up. Do you, do you get them all ramped up and onboarded as well too? Sorry, yeah. I'm laughing because I know the answer to that one, but yeah. Yeah, it, it's a little bit of who's on first. You know, I yeah. think enablement's a really hot topic right now. And I think a lot of companies are doing it. Um, you know, and with even within the company, I think a lot of departments are following suit. But, you know, if I had to predict, I think enablement is the way to go for enablement is to have it all under one umbrella. It makes sense. To sort yeah. of be that those gears for the organization, right? Not have a little sprinkle here, a little <laughs> sprinkle here and have like these random. Oh, oh you're doing that too. Oh, cause I'm it's doing it. Oh, I'm not using that tool. I found this better tool. No, yeah. I already paid for two years for it though. So. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yes. It's, you know, having uh, you know, that, that could lead to a lot of inefficiencies, which yeah. is kind of the, the counteract of what you're trying to do uh, with enablement, which is increase efficiency. So yeah. I just knowing you and, and how um, efficient, that's not the word I'm looking for, but just as much attention to detail that you have. As soon as you were explaining everything to me, I just saw like a massive lucid chart in my head with decision points and things. Oh, that, yeah. I mean, because you have, I'm not making funny like that. Absolutely, I think is the way to go about doing that, right? Like, there's so many of these things and these actions and decisions that are happening that if you don't have it sketched out, it's going to be make make up as you go along, and then that's no good for what you're trying to do, right? Absolutely, I, I think um, you know I sitting down giving yourself time to sit down and think and plan is uber important yeah. you know um and that's something that i i gave permission to myself to do is literally in a notebook just kind of sketch out yeah the streams and then the responsibilities and it just makes you feel more confident and comfortable oh, yeah. Yeah. And talking to stakeholders to be like, here's what it is, you know, and, and here's why it makes sense. And, and also in that process, testing it out right before releasing, talking to confidants to say, did I miss anything? Mm -hmm. You know, is there, and hit, hit me with it, you know, yeah. like, yeah. give me the, what about this? Or what about that? And let's test it out. Um, and, and, you know, I, I did that and then this is, this was the end result, you know, as things evolve, will it, will it, will the model to evolve? Probably, 
Yeah. But yeah, I, I'm a big believer in just give yourself time to think, you yeah, know, absolutely. put time on your schedule and, and uh, allow yourself that. And I love, I do you ever use um, Miro, M-I-R-O? Oh, it's a great tool for doing that. It's, uh, it's just a big fan, because my, my handwriting is terrible. So if I sketched it, I wouldn't be able to read it. So I have to, <laughs> I'm not kidding either, like it's terrible. So I, I do use that tool, that's for process flows. And I use it Miro. at least once a week, right. M-I-R-O, yes, they are, they can, you know how Miro, I'm sorry, you know how Lucid Chart kind of looks like very developer y, like very engineering? They kind of put colors and rounded edges and stuff like that around it, and they've got a lot of templates. It's a great product. Um, oh, and free, nice. too, free, free for what you're doing. Um, if you need to start integrating and using a lot of things, and you know, maybe it's a little bit more, but I'm not, uh, I'm not a stakeholder or shareholder. I was just going to ask you, <laughs> what's is this brought to you by Miro? Is this is this podcast brought to you by? Oh, Miro? Uh, that would be a great idea. Um, uh, no, they were a former customer of mine. I onboarded them, um, oh, okay. or, or my team onboarded them um, for for a customer that I had, and so uh, nice. so I got to know them well, and they were just really. They're, you know, when you meet a company and they're like, probably like what you're discussing, just doing all the right things. Like, God bless the CEO that allowed for this to happen because it's the right way to do it, right? So I just kind of always had that vibe about them. So, um, so there's exposure that you're looking for. There's making sure you get it all down right, right? Um, what's the big initiative this year for the for the enablement team? Yeah, there's a few actually. Um, I think you know. The, the sort of quick win, I'll start off, like I, I wanna make quick impacts where I can. And I think one of them, and for your listeners, this is probably a good tip is to really review your different communication streams, mm. right? I think we live in a world today, we're so lucky to live in a world where we have so many avenues to communicate with one another. Um, you know, whether you're a Teams shop, whether you're a Slack shop, Yep. There's like so many different things you could do, but it, which is awesome, but also can lead to uh, elusivity and, and, huh. and overwhelmment. There's, there's a hot topic in the CS community these days. I'd love to get your, I don't know if, you, if you're just going to give me a guideline, but it is basically, do you set up Slack with your customer? <laughs> Take a stand out. If you if you want your weekends, no. <laughs> if you want to relax on the weekend, probably not. And actually, you know, that goes for the customer too, right? If the yeah. customer wants to relax on the weekend, then no. Um, you know, that whole thing was I try and I'm like, I try and put that down like a like a sick animal whenever it pops up. But like uh I I just view it as it suddenly distorts what's important, right? Yes. I don't know if you ever heard about the quadrants of importance or whatever it is, but somebody's urgency is not your urgency that day. Of but course. Slack breaks all those rules, right? Oh, absolutely. She, oh, I, I see Alex is typing. Like, I'm just yeah, going to yeah, hang. Yeah, yeah. You're waiting on edge. Oh, <laughs> ooh, the dots, the dots. And then it like goes away and then it comes back and you're like, oh my gosh, like are they, yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think, you know, auditing your communications and like, and, do, and this is something the enablement function serves, right? Because nobody else thinks of doing it because they're all in it, right? And that's why the, getting back to enablement being separate, mm. they can look at it globally and be yeah. like, all right, let's take an audit. Yeah. What are all the Teams channels that everybody's using? What are all the chats? that everyone's using yeah. Oh, and, and taking all of that and reducing it to one or two and, and really leveraging the, the features of the technology. I think people, they sort of blend in a Teams with a chat room. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it, you know, and it's so much more than that, right? Yeah. So, so I think that number one, that was a quick win um, for this year that I was able to achieve and that, you know, that's, that's done so much benefit for the team to be like, okay, this is my one place where I go to exchange best practices with the team. Yeah. There's another place that I go to get product questions answered. Right. And it's not 50 different pings going on. Yeah. Um, 
So that's number one. And I think actually on that point, I'm sorry. And these are, you yeah. know, non-prepared questions. So I, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, but you're this really sparking all, my, my uh, free, free basing for sure. Uh, <laughs> so I have seen many organizations try and tackle this problem and then making it worse by just creating a voluminous amount of documentation, right? Like, oh, best internal chat thing. Oh, I got to go search through the Teams drive or the G drive and pull up the PowerPoint. How does that get worked into the DNA so that people know like, oh, yeah, I go here or that's the answer is this or, or X, Y, and Z? I love that question. I think, um, documentation is is crucial um but it's it's got to be organized yeah. in the right way you know it's kind of like um you know when you go on like apple's support page right they they organize it by product right mm -hmm. iphone ipad uh watch right etc so they've 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 really cracked the code in terms of organizing your documentation <clears throat> i think again that's another piece that enablement can help with being a sort of a third party of all right everyone's doing their own thing like let's all come together and organize documentation and so i think you know teams chats should be more like real time kind of okay. quick answer but if you have very organized documentation and easy to find things your sort of random chats are going to be smothered yeah. right? because people are going to know where to go yep um so they definitely play hand in hand i would say i think but i think to in the defense of a customer success manager or end user that wants their things we need to do a better job at organizing documentation um, and coming up with a master category system that that's easy to follow and also updated, right? It's got to be yes. crucial that um, you know everybody's that it's valuable to the organization to make sure that documentation is up to date whenever a launch is released, whenever new products are released, we go back and and update, right? Um, it's kind of like. You know, when when Apple launches, for example, they when they launch their um, their new phone that day in September, when they usually do it, as soon as Tim Cook gets on stage and gets off the stage, you go on their website and it's all updated. Yeah. Right. That's that's the type of stuff that's next level that we should all aim to be at mm -hmm. of like. The preparation is very important. I think we get clouded with the launch. Oh, we got to get that done quick and good. <laughs> but it's like, even if it's at the sacrifice of a few weeks or a month even, right. but you have your stuff together, it is way worth it than prematurely releasing and internally having no idea of what to do. Right. Um, so I'm a big, big believer in that. And I know yeah. you are too. Yeah, think. it's just, and you know, I put the whole confluence system in and everybody, there's the pain. Yes. You just go there, it's all yes. there. Like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's just craziness. But it's it's actually this kind of can segue into my next question because I'm imagining, but I'd love to hear back from you that if I was, you know, the VP or the CCO or whatever the CEO and this initiative comes about, I would set some KPIs up that would be. I will know this is successful eventually. No, no, no not saying this year or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, um, if uh, ultimately, right, the like internal NPS is high, right? So if uh, all the CSMs were at like, you know, sixes and now they're at eights or nines, like great, great, awesome job, right? Uh, maybe some uh, additional scalability uh, abilities. So you can handle instead of 30, maybe 40, just throwing those random numbers out. Every company is different. A, did I get those right? And then B, what are some of the other things that, that you'll know your job has been successful? Love that question too. Um, and I really you know, wish I put this in our Google Doc, but uh, <laughs> they, your, your answers have made me think of these. So. No, this is all stuff that's in my mind. It's funny. Yeah. So viewers on the phone, Jeff did an amazing job with just kind of, you know, uh, or just prepping me a little bit with a few questions. But um, 
you know, yeah, a lot of these, this is just a really organic conversation. I, I really appreciate it. Like coffee that. talk, right? It's just- Like coffee real. talk, like coffee <laughs> talk. <laughs> yes. um, but, uh, you know, I think to measure success, I, I love how you just positioned it. It's exactly how I believe in it as well, is that our customers are the customer success team, mm -hmm. right, for, for CS enablement. Um, so in that we treat them as customers and we actually, I do a, uh, biannual survey with them and measure how we're doing. Right. Yeah. And then I also angle it in, in, in making sure that I ask questions on those streams that I mentioned before. So how do you feel? Do you feel supported with learning and development? Do you feel supported with um, customer relations, what do you think of Gainsight or any of the software that we're using? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, solutions enablement, how are you feeling that the release process is going, et cetera. So really zoning in on those. And yeah. that, that to me is, is crucial and making sure that that needle continues to move in the positive direction. Mm -hmm. And then also making sure that I capture you know, suggestions, recommendations, et cetera. Um, I think sort of the second little tier to that is we also have a suggestions box that we've built that folks throughout the year can submit suggestions on things like process improvements, training recommendations, et cetera. Because we want to make sure, right, again, treating them like a customer that we are listening to them, listening to their pain points mm -hmm. and developing projects to address those pain points. Um, so I would say, you know, the, in combination of those two, yeah. if the needle moves in the positive direction and we're building projects, addressing those issues, that to me measures success for an enablement function. Oh, that's great. Wow, I feel like I've gotten sort of the full picture now what what what's what did I miss? What did I not ask? Like if you were to say, nope, that pretty much covers enablement. Like, well, <laughs> I was like, now another hour we could go. But like, what what did we did we cover everything, or are there other sort of little things that you wanted to to get in there? Yeah, I think um, my notes here. I think I think we yeah, I think we I think we covered. It. I think maybe one thing to double click into is just project management. Ah, favorite subject of mine. Absolutely. I know it is. <laughs> you can actually, Everybody needs a little project management in them, right? So. They, they absolutely do. And I, you know, I can learn from you on this as well. I think um, project management, having that skill set is such a universal skill to have yeah. under your belt. Not and it's not just for project managers, you know. No. I, I think it, it just organize it, it really shapes you to become a leader. If you have project management skills and you can organize the chaos, that's what people are looking for. Be yeah. having somebody that can take noise and bring it down into actionable steps, yeah. and knowing what the principles are. So yeah. that's one thing I no, it's 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 huge, and I do recommend. And there's there's courses out there as well where this is like uh, project management for CS professionals and things like that. And you know they're cheap, you know, and they're, but they're awesome. And because because you need just that flavor, right? As you say, you don't need to know the whole PMP route where you could manage a space shuttle being built. Like it's you don't need that, right? But uh, you know that's what we did with bringing Basecamp in at Virgin. It was like customers they. They just want to see that you know you're going to get them from from A to Z, and and this is the process. And we've done it before, and we're walking you through that, and um, and you know, and then just the skills to be able to get there from from one thing to the next and stuff like that. So yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, and I think you know it also protects your team's bandwidth, right? Very much like when you know in in your world when you ran implementation, like you knew based on projects. Yeah. All right. This person on my team has four massive things. Four they implementations. Do. They take ninety days to one hundred and twenty days, so they're at full capacity. I need they're done. Yeah. They're full <laughs> capacity. And I think approaching 
solutions as projects is similar, right? Because yeah. it, it's, it's like you can only do so much and you can only solve for so much. So I found it very helpful to undergo project management skills so that you can treat each solution as a project yeah. and, and, you know, put the time out and, and have data to support that, to be like, Hey, I, this is great, but we're going to put this on the back burner because we're now working on these four other, th we're cooking these four other things. Yeah. If you want the back burner to come here, I got to put one of these on the warmer. Oh, so it's so funny you said that because that is now, that's what they teach in agile project management, right? It's like, oh. or the way I always say it is uh, probably too old for some people listening, but uh, your mom gives you four quarters to go to the arcade. <laughs> I could do four games of Space Invaders. I could do two games of Space Invaders and two games of Asteroids. It's up to you. Yes. You tell me how you would like to spend this time and money. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and every project is different. You know, it's, it's, you know, it, it, a project can be a dime to use your quarter analogy. Yeah. A project could be a quarter, <laughs> right? So like you have four quarters that you have in your pocket, but maybe one of those quarters is two dimes and a nickel, right? <laughs> yep. You know, I, I'm and, just laughing because you're bringing up old SNL jokes for me and I'm just trying not to quote them, but yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So no, it's, it, but also the other thing is that you're in the ability to break a large task and to chunk it down into small tasks is not for everybody, right? Like, oh, we got this big thing to do. Well, what, what would be the steps to get there, right? Like high tasks, sub tasks, right? It's like, and some just, you know, as I said, some people are huggers and some people are, uh, you know, not huggers. No, <laughs> There's no, like, one exactly. trying, wish I had the other one for that. But, uh, oh, well, thanks. Because I, I actually felt, um, and one thing I always ask and tell people is that that's what I brought into the CS field was this project management thing, which totally. is, you know, being able to bring just the minimum viable amount of structure into the CS, um, you know, the field dominated by empathy and, and things like that. But it's like, let's throw in like 5% project management here and I think everything will be okay. So yeah. That's Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, I think it's universal. It, it's just the principles of, you know, it, it's not Six Sigma thing, but just the yeah. principles of project management of thinking through things, right? Getting back to our earlier in the conversation, giving yourself time and permission to think things through and building structure yep. is the principles of project management. And I think, gosh, everyone should just <laughs> listen in on those skills because they're just- I, I, so I've, never, I've never seen a more detailed project plan than I've seen ones for weddings. I'll just leave it on that. But Oh uh, boy, that's a whole different thing. That, <laughs> that, that comes with not just project management, but like- Emotion emotion and dealing with yeah somebody else could take there, there's something for everyone in this world that's why there's you know, doctors wedding planners all these things it's yeah and not not for me for sure i'll, I'll take i'll take uh other projects for sure yeah, oh 100 so i you've been very gracious with your time but i do try and wrap things up by wondering what your your covid hobby was uh while we were all you know living <laughs> sheltered and in place yeah i love that question um, you know, I've always, I've always been a mu music guy, you know, this. Yeah. About oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so just music getting gets me through a lot of things, yeah. you know, and there's, there's maybe no hobby per se that I picked up on, but, you know, just I'm sure like, you had to you, the ability to always just dive in and find more and just yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think, um, re well, maybe, okay. So maybe this, so I, I also read a lot and usually I'm a nonfiction kind of guy. Yeah. Uh, but lately I've been getting into trying to dabble into fiction. Okay. Kind of when I read, it's a little bit on a selfish vibe. It's like, I want to get something out of this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And fiction doesn't really, everyone's like, yeah, but fiction, you can escape. I'm like, I'm yeah. the same. I'm the same. I'm, I'm not a fiction person. Yeah. I used to growing up and everything, but now, and now it's funny on the, on all the business books. It's like three chapters and I'm like, get it. I get the point. Stop nailing it. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. move on to the next one. Yep. Exactly. I get it. Do, do, do this thing for 10 hours, 10,000 hours and I'll be yeah. a master. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And then the rest of the chapters are the same. 
<laughs> yeah, I've been, I, I dabbled in a, a few fiction over the, over sort of this, this time period. Um, and it's funny just to double click on this just recently, Tim Ferriss, who you introduced me to actually, yeah, yeah. um, he, he just published a, um, a list of, which I, I haven't delved into it yet, but it's a list of books for not a, a list of fiction books for nonfiction readers. Oh, interesting. I actually haven't listened to Ferris for a while. I think he came out with that massive like book that was like the size of the Bible. And I was like, oh man. And I just couldn't, I, I don't know. I just, uh, or, or I think I switched from Android to iPhone and all my podcasts went away. And I just never signed up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So he, I, I want to look that up though, because I, that, that's, yeah. I'll forward it to you. It's a, um, it's an article that he, that he wrote. He, he has like five bullet Fridays. And I think, I think that was part of it. Oh, but anyways, cool. yeah, I'll forward it to you. I, I, I'm going to go through them and, and favorite all of them to like, I'll add them to my Amazon. Good reads. Yeah. 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 Like good reads as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I would say those and just kind of staying healthy with working out, trying to yeah. make that a continuous priority, um, mental breaks, you know, making sure that I get some vitamin D, make sure my sleep is on check. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just just trying to to stay stay healthy. It sounds like you learned all the lessons from that we used to preach at our previous employer, which is we all did. these habits that we're you know, talking about. And, yeah. and just to give you a little little up here, so so for your listeners, um, so Jeff when when he started at Virgin oh no, Earth, he, <laughs> no this is good. He um, he yep. just went he went for the gold and he started a boot camp outside i think it was like week number one or two yeah and it, well, was, it started because i was like hey is it okay if i just bring my stuff here because i'm not i don't have enough time with the commute to work out in the morning <laughs> and, it was, and it was so popular everybody took it and like if jeff was on pto people would be like no who's gonna run the boot camp <laughs> and it was it was great it was a highly successful thing and just a, a huge testament to just you adopting the values of the culture, the organization, being a team player. It was just, it was really, really, really cool. Um, oh, you're too kind, but I appreciate that. I still have good memories. I love the fact that it was in front of like a broken down ice cream factory. Like it just had this very like Thunderdome I type forgot of vibe. About that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and actually here's the irony, that place is a now a it's yeah. a lifetime gym. It's yeah. what if people don't know the massive, enormo fitness places, which are, yeah, it is, they're awesome. But uh, yeah. that's awesome. Well, Alex, uh, thanks for being so gracious with your time. I'm going to, we're going to hit stop here. We'll get all your socials and everything out. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll wrap up after I stop on the recording. So thanks awesome. so much. We'll Thank you, reconnect Jeff. in a year on this and we'll, we'll find out how the initiatives have gone. And uh, just hold on one second. I'll just stop the recording here. So, yeah. Thank you, Jeff.